Hey math divas and math dudes, today we're going to be talking about congruence and some triangle congruence theorems. Please turn to a fresh clean page in your MP notebook and jot down this title. All right, first thing for your notes is a definition for the word congruent. Congruent means that two or more figures are the same size and the same shape. All right, please make a sketch of the two congruent triangles you see directly below this definition. And I can see that triangle ABC is the same size and shape as triangle XYZ. So I can write a congruence statement um, just like I would normally write a similarity statement. I can certainly write a congruence statement as well. So we're going to say that triangle ABC is congruent to, and we've got a new symbol to learn here, that's an equal sign with the similarity symbol above it. This means congruent to. And that's going to be congruent to triangle XYZ. When I name my congruent figures, I want to make sure that I um, put the corresponding angles in the same position of my statement. Okay, directly underneath that, you can see that we have are, we are going to take a look at two congruent hexagons. Now, we're going to write a uh, congruence statement about them. And um, whenever we're dealing with a figure that has more than three sides, we don't always need a little symbol like we use the triangle. So um, I'm just going to start naming the figure with the letters. And I'm going to start here with this letter D. So I can say that hexagon D, E, F, G, H, I is congruent to, now I want to make sure that I start in the same position and follow the same pattern that I did when I named my first hexagon. So I'm going to start with R and follow the same pattern, naming it S, T, U, V, W. And there's my congruence statement about those hexagons. Okay, the primary focus of today's lesson is about triangle congruence theorems. All right, and we're going to talk about a few of them today. So the first one is the side, side, side congruence theorem, which is oftentimes abbreviated SSS for side, side, side. And this theorem states that if three sides of one triangle are congruent to three sides of another triangle, then the triangles will be congruent. So please make a sketch of these two triangles right underneath the rule. I would recommend that you pause your video at this time to jot down this theorem and the sketch before we go on. Hit resume as soon as you're ready. Okay. I can see that on my triangle on the left, side MK is 6 inches long. The corresponding side from the other triangle is side WS, which is also 6 inches long. So in order for me to use this theorem, I need to state that there are three pairs of congruent sides. So right now I know that side MK is congruent to side WS. All right, next I'm going to highlight side ME on my first triangle. And I can see that is congruent to side WC on the other triangle. They are both 4 inches long. So I can say side ME is congruent to side WC. Okay, the last pair of sides um, on my triangle on the left, side KE is 9 inches. And that is congruent to side SC on the other triangle because that is also 9 inches. So I can say that side KE is congruent to side SC. Now, since we do have three pairs of congruent sides, I can definitely know for certain that these two triangles are congruent, so I'm going to write a congruent statement about them. I can say that triangle MKE is congruent to 
triangle WSC and I know this by using the side 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 rule. All right, we're going to take a look at another example. This one's a little bit tougher because um, the two triangles that we're going to try to prove are congruent are actually connected. So sometimes when we look at the figure, we might see a four-sided quadrilateral um, or a rhombus to be more specific. But that line in the middle, which is called a diagonal, actually separates the four-sided figure into two separate triangles, even though they're connected. All right, so please make a sketch of this figure if you have not already done so. And then let's take a look at, um, at the figure more closely. You can see that some of the sides have little slash marks on them. And those slash marks, when they match each other, indicate that those side lengths are equal to one another. So I'm going to highlight side AC, which has a single slash mark. And I'm also going to highlight side DB because it also has a single slash mark. I know that these two sides are equal in length to one another, so the two, that pair is congruent. So I can say side AC is congruent to side DB. Okay, next I see that side AB has a double slash mark through it, and so does side DC. Because they have matching slash marks, I can tell that um, they are equal in length. And so I'm going to write a congruent statement about that pair of sides. AB is congruent to DC. All right, in order to prove these are congruent by the side, side, side rule, I need a third pair of congruent sides. I don't really have a pair. However, this side is a side of both of the triangles. So I can say that side BC is congruent to side CB. Because I now have three pairs of congruent sides, I know that these triangles are congruent, and I'm going to write a congruent statement about them. I'm going to say triangle ABC is congruent to, and I need to follow the same pattern, so AB had the double slash mark, so I'm going to say that triangle DCB is congruent to ABC. And I know this by using the side, side, side rule. Okay, notice that I've got three sides, and I have three congruent side statements. So there's my proof. This part right here, ladies and gentlemen, is our mathematical proof, how we know that this rule actually works. So are these triangles congruent? Yes, they are. All right, go ahead and pause your video at this time so you can write down our second rule, the side angle side congruence theorem. Please jot down this rule and make a sketch of the two triangles you see below it. When you finish, please resume your video and we'll go over this rule. So, if we're looking at the side angle side rule, it states that if two sides and the included angle of one triangle are congruent to the corresponding two sides and included angle of the second triangle, then the triangles are congruent. All right, so two sides. Let's take a look at those first. The first side I'm going to highlight is side MN on the triangle on the left, which I'm noticing is 8 meters long. Okay, I started at the top M and went down towards the right angle. So if I do the same thing, I'm noticing that side QR is also 8 meters. Okay, I'm going to start writing out my mathematical proof and say that side MN is congruent to side QR. That takes care of one side. All right, another side that I see is labeled is side NP, which is 14 meters long. And I started at the right angle and went away from it, so I'm going to do the same thing on the other triangle. Side RS is also 14 meters. 
So since they're the same length, I know they're congruent, and that's going to be part of my proof. So NP is congruent to RS. So I've taken care of the side and the side, and now I need to talk about that angle. Notice that our rule has the words included angle bolded and underlined. That must mean it's pretty important, and it is. So what they mean when they say the included angle is that angle has to be in between the two congruent sides. So I have a congruent side here and a congruent side here, and the angle has to be in between, which it is. That angle is designated as a 90 degree angle, and if I look at my other figure in between the two given sides, I have a matching corresponding 90 degree angle. So I now know that angle N is congruent to angle R. I now have the side, the angle, and the side. So I know that my triangles are congruent. I'm going to go ahead and write a congruent statement. Triangle M N P is congruent to triangle Q R S and I know this from the side angle side rule. All right, let's do one last example together. This is a tougher one. Remember that um, sometimes we've got congruent figures that are um, connected to one another. I'm going to highlight um, one triangle here. I really have three triangles, two that are side by side and one large triangle. Okay, so I'm going to take and highlight that one, and then I'm going to highlight the one next to it in gray. All right, so um, first thing I'm noticing is that both of the bottoms of these triangles are five feet long. So this side is congruent to this side. So I'm going to say side PT is congruent to side WT. I'm also noticing that both of these um, triangles have a right angle. So I'm going to say angle P, T, K is congruent to angle W, T, K. Now some people wonder, why didn't you just call them angle T and angle T? Um, they are two different angles, and so if they both have the same vertex point, I really do need to name them um, with three letters so I can be very specific about which one is which. Okay, and lastly, I'm noticing that these two triangles share a common side right here. So side um, KT is going to be congruent to side KT. So now I have a side, an angle, and a side, and that angle is in the middle of the two sides. So I know that these triangles are congruent. I'm going to say triangle P. T, K is congruent to triangle W, T, K, and I know this by using the side angle side rule. All right, ladies and gents, I know that you have enough information to complete your checkpoints successfully and get crack a on your homework. Good luck, everyone.